Hello everybody and welcome to the Spore Marker and Partners YouTube channel. My name is Mitchell Parsonage and today I'm going to talk to you about a third party Revit plugin designed by Dyroots called Sheetlink. I will leave a link down below to the download section of their website if you like the tool and want to grab it for yourself. And if you would like to know how to install and download in a bit more detail, you can watch the first video in this series, One Filter, and that will explain that in a little bit more detail. So let's get started. The sheet link tool is all about a synergistic relationship between Revit as well as Excel. You can export element parameters to Excel in a nicely format document. You can export existing schedules, sheet lists, things like that. You can make modifications to the data and you can bring it back into Revit. Once you have installed the tool, you'll find it in your Dyroots tab and you will have a sheet link button. When the sheet link dialog box opens, you can move it around and double click on the name sheet link to collapse it. However, this is not a modal window, so you can't actually interact with your model in the background uh, while it is minimized. So you need to actually close it to make changes to your model. You have four ways of selecting the elements that you would like to export the parameters of. Up here in your selection area, you have got whole model, which is everything in your model it will include all of the categories like sheets and views and rooms and things like that. Then you've got active view, which will greatly reduce the number of categories that you have available. And then if you would like to select the, the elements that you would like to work with, you can click on new selection, which will minimize the sheet link window and give you the opportunity to create um, a window selection around the items that you would like. Click the finish button in your options bar then you have got all of the elements that, that you have selected listed here, as well as the parameter names that relate to those elements. So if you select these parameters and you pull them across to the selected parameters window over here and you export this to Excel, which is what I will show you how to do in a second. But if you do that, the parameters will only show up for the relevant elements. So, you know, if you have a duct and you have an air terminal and the duct has a height parameter and the air terminal doesn't in Excel, air terminal won't have a height row. So I'm going to go to whole model and let's work with, for example, air terminals. And I just want to export a couple of things. So let's say comments. And you'll also notice that you've got a little key down here at the bottom um, and that tells you what type of parameter you're basically working with. Read only parameters cannot be changed in Excel. So I'll take across the comments. Uh, let me take across the level, I can take across the mark. For now, let's just keep it with those three. And if I'm happy with that, I can go export to, I'm gonna select export. So I'm gonna save over a previous air terminals one that I did and it will open up Excel. So you can see that it really lays it out quite nicely for you. You can make modifications to this information here. You've got these little arrows that, uh, sorry, if you click on a cell, you've got these little arrows that will allow you to change to any of the existing levels that were in your project at the time. And these actually allow you to make the modifications to these items, even to model elements. Let's change the level that some of these air terminals exist on. So I'll come down here to the ones found on the, the second floor. And what I'll do is I'll just change a couple of these to be a uh, first floor. Okay, so four will be fine. And once I've made those modifications, I'm gonna click save. Okay, so I'm gonna save this, close it down. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import that information. I'm gonna go to import from, import. I'm gonna go to that location. I'm gonna click the air terminals Excel file and I'm gonna open that up. Model updated successfully. So I'm gonna say, okay. And if I close this down, I can actually see that those four air terminals that I changed in my Excel, they were obviously, as I can see on the second floor here, but they were actually moved down to the first floor plan. So making a change to the parameters in Excel, bringing it back into Revit will actually allow you to make change to the model elements. So I'm just gonna undo that very quickly because I want to bring a couple of things to your attention when you are in fact doing this. So I'm gonna go to the sheet link. I'm gonna select air terminals. I'm gonna go and export that level parameter again. What is important to realize here when you're making modifications, a couple of things that you can do. You can delete the information from Excel if you would like to do that. If you have no interest in looking at these or maybe you wanna send this file to someone for them to actually complete so that you can bring back into Revit, but you don't want them to see this information just as an example, you can delete that. Okay, and you can 
Delete anything you want here in any order. But what you cannot do is rearrange the order of the elements. So if I take these four that I just used in the previous example and I cut those and I just paste them a little bit further up as, as an example. Okay, and I will make changes to this again. So I'll call this first floor plan once again. So we know which four air terminals these are. Okay, so I'm gonna save, I'm gonna close, and then I am going to import that again. Model updated successfully. I'm gonna close this down. Notice how those four air terminals that were dealt with previously are not the ones that are selected anymore. It's actually gone around here and it's made changes to elements that were found on the third floor. The row information in Excel is really important to keep that as it was when it was imported into Excel originally. Okay, you can't move the elements location around in the Excel file. You can delete them, you can update them, but you cannot move them. So that's just something that I wanted to bring uh, to your attention. That's an example of uh, changing some model elements. What I can also do is if I've got a sheet list, which I do have in here, I can change my category options over here to not model categories, but actually schedules, where I've got a list of all of my schedules and here is my sheet list. So I'm gonna tick that and there are all of the parameters that I want to export or that are part of my sheet list. So I'll just immediately export that Okay, open it up and I can take a look at some of the information. So again, if you have a lot of sheets in your project and you actually wanna make a change, a mass change to a whole bunch of them at once, this is a very viable method. Export the sheet list to Excel, make the changes here in Excel because obviously it's, it's often a lot easier to do that here. And then you can import it back into Revit and make adjustments to several sheets, hundreds, if not thousands, at once, rather than having to do it in a bit more of a manual process. If I use the checked by as an example here, I will just change the checked by to my name and I'll apply that to all of the sheets. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with all of these as well, just so we can see the change. So SE, I will just change that designer. I will change that to PAR. I can also change, of course, the sheet name. I can do the sheet number as well, which is quite handy. I'll just add a few digits there. Designed by, again, I'll just put my name. So I'm just making these changes so that you can see um, how quick and easy it is to actually do these things. It's obviously very important to save the document before you import it back so that the changes that you've made have been captured. I will import. Okay, model updated successfully. So I will close that down. And if I go to my sheet list, I will see that all of that information has been captured. Okay, and if I, of course, go to the actual sheet itself, that information has changed where it is relevant. So this is a really quick way to make changes to multiple sheets simultaneously. What I can also do is include linked files. So that is the purpose of this little house over here. So just to give you a very quick uh, breakdown over here, I've got in this particular model, I've got lighting fixtures and I've got 12 of them. Okay, now I don't have any lighting fixtures in my master file. So if I go to sheet link and I say, if I look down here, first of all, I'll notice that I don't have lighting fixtures as a category because lighting fixtures don't exist in my model. If I click include linked files, I will now find lighting fixtures. So I can tick those. And again, I've got all of the relevant information over here. So I can add comments. I can go and check what, uh, what level. So I can export all of this information from the linked file. Okay, and again, I will get all of that information available to me. What I can't do here, however, is change any of this information because it is in a linked file. And if I try to, so I'll just make modification to just those three, for example, save it, import this back into my model. It will give me um, a warning over here saying linked elements cannot be updated. And it will show you the current value, what you tried to make it, and you can choose to save that issue if you would like. Okay, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna close it down. You do have the ability to add the parameter information to the Excel file. Uh, from a linked file, but you cannot make any changes to it. When you export several categories, for example, air terminals, let's say ducts, duct insulation, and I will just choose a couple of these to add across. Now, those three categories will be separated inside of Excel as well, which is really great. And they'll be separated into 
tabs. So down here at the bottom, you'll see I've got air terminals, my duct insulation, as well as my ducts. I've also got an instructions tab that comes with every export that you do, just telling you what the, the cell colors actually mean and what they stand for. Yeah. And if I were to go ahead and do a new selection over here and select a whole bunch of different items that I wanted to work with, the same thing would happen inside of Excel. So I'll just choose a bunch of random ones to export. So this will separate all of those items for me into tabs inside of Excel. So you see down here at the bottom, I've got an awful lot of different ones that I can actually access, select and have a look at the relevant information that is required. You can also choose to filter what type of parameter you would like to look for. If you don't want to have all of them selected, just untick the ones that you don't want and you will be able to have a look at just that information. So this is a very powerful tool, allows you again to have that synergistic relationship between Revit as well as Excel, and it makes changing information and modifying some elements a lot quicker. Even though there's an export import process, it's still a lot faster to make certain changes in Excel than it would be to make those same changes inside of Revit. That is everything that I wanted to show you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will get back to them as soon as I can. Look out for the next one and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.